Bridging finance made easy. Now, one of the things at the property circle that all of my community asked me is, Steve, can you please explain bridging finance? We don't understand it. We're scared of it. We don't know how it works. We don't know what the implications are if we go over our bridge. So I thought I would make a video for you guys to understand bridging is not as complicated as most people think. Also, it's not as difficult to obtain as a residential mortgage and as long as you communicate, there is no issues if you need to go over the allocated time of the length of the bridge. So join me over there while I explain to you a simple case on bridging. This is a lender that is open to everybody who is in the market for a bridge. So I'm giving you a breakdown of what's available right now today. So we're going to base it on a £200,000 property and this is for ease of use. And we are looking for a 75% loan to value, meaning you have to put 25% deposit into this. Now there are lenders out there that will give you 20% deposits and there are lenders out there that might make you give 30% deposit, but we are basing it on a 25% deposit, as you can see here. We are also looking for 12 months, okay? And if you look there, it says retained interest, which means you pay the interest up front. Now, so many people think that they have the choice of paying the interest up front, paying the interest rolled up at the end, or paying the interest monthly. That's not true. Based on your experience and based on your affordability, the lender will tell you what they want you to do. Most people will have to pay the interest up front. Some of you will get the option of monthly and some of you will get the option of paying at the end when you pay the loan back. But I'm basing it today on you are paying the interest up front. So as we can see here, and if you think about your circumstances on a property, 12 months is a great time to take a bridge out for because if you're doing a flip project, by the time you complete, by the time you get your contractors in, by the time the refurb is done, and by the time you sell it, it could be 12 months. So don't try and take a bridge out for six months and have the stress of that because then you've got to obviously extend the bridge where you have to pay more fees. Use 12 months, use your, use your common sense, use your brains, base it on how long it takes. If you're doing a flat conversion, if you're doing a large HMO, probably have it for 15 or 18 months. But this one here is based on 12 months. Now, when we come down here, you can see there is a 1% fee and a 1% broker fee. We are basing this on a residential and the purpose of the loan is obviously a property purchase and we're using this in a limited company. This is a corporate borrowing structure. Now if we move on to this side guys, we have the overview. Now the overview is a £200,000 loan with a £150,000 loan amount gross to you. Now, you have to pay the difference between there, which is £50,000. That's your deposit, okay? That's what you have to put into this to get this bridge. 75% loan to value, and the interest rate on this one today is 0.94%. Then if we look here, guys, we have the arrangement fee, which is 2% of the gross loan. So 150,000 is your loan. Your arrangement fee to set this up is 3,000 pounds. Your title insurance fee and your general insurance fee comes in at around 350 pounds. This just helps to speed it up like an indemnity policy. You have to pay for them. To transfer your funds, there's a 25 pound fee. And you also have the 12 months of interest that you have to pay up front which equates to £16,920. Meaning, the lender will borrow you £129,703.40p. How have we got to that figure? I'm going to explain it to you. But on top of that, guys, you have legal fees, which is 1000 and you have 
valuation fees, which this one is £265. On top of that as well, you have your stamp duty. And on top of that as well, you have your own legal fees to pay. So there's more to pay outside of there as well. So you will have to put into this project or this bridge, a roughly on this one, around 72,000 to the lender. And then obviously your stamp duty and your legal fees based on stamp duty at 3% and your legal fees, whether it's 1,000 to 2,500 on top. So to break it down a lot simpler for you because not many people understand it, I've just given you a run through. So we're borrowing 200,000, which means we have to put a 25% deposit in, meaning you have to pay 50,000. That's you, okay? Then we was getting it at 0.94%. That's what the 12 months were costing each month, 0.94%, which meant it was around a £16,000 interest to borrow the money, which a lot of people will have to pay up front. So with all the other fees and all the other bits and pieces which we've talked about, guys, it meant that you would have to put £72,000 of your money into your solicitor's bank to obtain the bridge which was £200,000 of the purchase price, meaning you got £129,000 roughly loan from the bridging company. So that's how it works. Not everybody has to pay the interest up front. Some people, like I said, can pay monthly. Some people can pay at the end. It's all based on your personal circumstances and your experience. But for newbies, you will more than likely have to pay the interest up front. So if you've got this loan for 12 months and you go over the 12 months, you will have to pay extension fees. They might even hit you with a new interest rate. But communication, if you know you're going to exceed your 12 months, call them six weeks, eight weeks before. But if you had the loan for 12 months and you paid 16,000 interest, obviously upfront, because it was 0.94% of the loan amount, which means each month you will probably pay about 1,333 pound, roughly each month, okay? If you complete the bridge and you want to pay it back after 10 months, the retained interest that you paid of 16,000, you will receive two months worth of payments back to you. So you use the bridge to how long you want to use it for till you pay it back in full. And if you pay it back before the 12 months, you return your money. So in this case, you would probably get back about £2,700 from your original 16000 if you completed the whole process in 10 months. Hopefully, I have made this as simple as possible. And bridging is awesome. It's not difficult to get. You can get bridging in a limited company that you set up today. You don't have to have trading on your limited company in order to obtain a bridge or a buy-to-let mortgage. It's a myth that so many people fall to. They're like, I have a limited company. It's not been trading for so long, so I can't get a mortgage. In the property industry, you can set up a limited company today and get a bridge today. The same as a buy-to-let mortgage, you can do the same. So don't think that you have to have a history of trading in your limited company. And bridging is a great form of borrowing. It's what the BRR stands for. Bridge, refurbish, refinance, rent. That's what it actually stands for. Bridging is there for properties that are unmortgageable. Buy-to-let mortgages is usually for a property that's a turnkey, meaning you can buy the property and you can rent it out within 30 days. That's what buy-to-lets are for. Bridging is for dilapidated properties that you need to 
get into a fit state in order to obtain a buy select mortgage to rent it out. Hopefully, I have made this as simple as possible for you. I hope that video was as helpful as I think it was. It's the one I get asked for the most. Any videos that you guys want to break down on, stress test, lending, BRR, deal sourcing, auction, drop it in the comments below. We will make it happen for you. And also, if you're looking for your one-stop property shop, join the property circle. I do everything that you need in order to be successful in the property world. Take a look at this.